Donald Trump, meanwhile, is trying to capitalize on the discord within the Democratic Party and perhaps on display here in Philadelphia. Yesterday, the Republican nominee hit the trail with his running mate, Mike Pence, for the first time as the official GOP ticket. And Trump took dead aim at Hillary Clinton and the DNC while making a direct appeal to Bernie Sanders supporters. Uh, Donald Trump is now about to speak to veterans in Charlotte, North Carolina. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton, in fact, spoke to the same group yesterday. Here's Major Garrett. The next president of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Donald Trump and Mike Pence hit the road, eager to exploit divisions at the Democratic convention. So would you rather be here or would you rather be with crooked Hillary Clinton? By using one of Bernie Sanders' favorite attack lines against Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton has bad judgment, okay? All right. Capitalizing now, on leaks of DNC emails up. showing favoritism to Clinton's campaign, Trump called Clinton disloyal for dumping party chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Debbie, you're fired, Debbie. You were loyal to me for years and you're fired. That's what she said. Boy, did she give up fast. Hillary, that's a real strong person, right? And Trump began the long shot courting of Sanders supporters by accusing him of giving up on their cause. Bernie has given up, and I never thought I was going to see that. But a new poll out this morning shows 42% of independents have a less favorable view of the GOP after their convention. I'll bet you a lot of their people come to us because, uh, seriously, and we'll take them, we'll take them. And Major Garrett is inside the Charlotte Convention Center in North Carolina, again, where Donald Trump will be speaking this morning. Good enough to join us now. Major, we appreciate the time. And as expected, Major, Donald Trump came out swinging yesterday in the wake of the DNC email hack, both on Twitter and at the microphones. And obviously those revelations play into that narrative of his that the system is rigged. Is it fair to say that the Trump campaign then feels good about how day one went here in Philly? Well, look, if you'd asked the Trump campaign last week, what were you hoping for on day one of the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia? They would have said, well, maybe some division, maybe some discord between the Sanders and Clinton campaigns, and we'll try to exploit that. Never in their wildest dreams would they have imagined what they saw play out yesterday afternoon and into the evening. Yes, by the end of the program last night, things looked a lot more unified than they did earlier. But the discord, the division, the sense of suspicion even between Sanders and Clinton supporters was plainly visible and something the Trump campaign gleefully exploited. And if you told the Trump campaign, hey, there's probably going to be something dealing with emails that looks a little messy, kind of feels or looks like a scandal, they would have said jackpot twice over. So the Trump campaign looks at what's going on in Philadelphia, sees an opening, and is trying to make the most of it as they talk about two essentially reinforcing messages. Washington has got all sorts of problems. And if you want to elect someone who has been inside Washington for the better part of 25 years and you think that's going to be the solution, go with Hillary Clinton. If you want someone outside the system who has a view to not only what's wrong with it, but how to fix it, go with Donald Trump. And based on the crowd we saw in Winston-Salem, North Carolina last night, an absolute capacity crowd, people lined up five, six hours in advance, that's a message that appears to be resonating. Now, uh, Major, we saw in your piece that 42 percent uh, number of independent voters who have a less favorable uh, view of the GOP following uh, the GOP's convention in Cleveland. Uh, obviously, Donald Trump making a direct appeal to Bernie Sanders supporters, even as he lines up Bernie Sanders himself in the crosshairs. What to make of this strategy? <laughs> Well, look, it's a rough-edged strategy, to say the least, and it is only a strategy in a sense that Trump likes to talk about it. There is no actual strategy in terms of direct outreach or data mining or persuasion face-to-face -face with potential Bernie Sanders supporters. The Trump campaign is in no way, shape, or form that sophisticated. One thing I will tell you, though, Josh, we saw something in Winston-Salem last night that we've not seen before, an actual voter registration table for the Trump campaign, which means they are at least at the beginning edge of trying to understand that, yes, when you draw a big crowd, it might not be a bad idea to see if they're all registered to vote, and if they're not, help them with that process. So at an embryonic level, they're beginning to understand some of the fundamentals, some of the real sort of kindergarten basics of a national campaign, which for the Trump campaign is a start. 
But when Trump talks about winning over Sanders supporters, it's really mostly rhetoric. He does believe that there is something about the trade message he has that Bernie Sanders clearly agrees with, suspicious of multinational trade deals and all those that are pending and even the ones that were approved during the Clinton years. And that might be a place where Sanders supporters might be inclined to move toward Trump. But there are so many other reasons not to go in that direction. And Bernie Sanders gave voice to all of them last night. So right now, Josh, this is a rhetorical appeal. There is no hard and fast polling evidence that it's going anywhere. And again, uh, Donald Trump expected to address the convention there later today. We figured to have his remarks live for you here on CBS and Major Garrett in Charlotte, North Carolina. We appreciate the time. My pleasure.